Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a concept map covering the basics of the material uh, when it concerns uh, kinematics in AP Physics 1. This is not AP Physics C or anything remotely related to AP Physics 2, uh, but specifically the scope of the map of for AP Physics 1. Now, I know this doesn't include everything. I'm include as much as I can, um, but this is a nice holistic review. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is um, looking at kinematics. The very, very first thing you talk about in kinematics is what is speed. So speed is distance over time. And then what is velocity? And so average speed and average velocity. And that's displacement over time. When you look at the average or the total divided by total, you're not looking at instantaneous. You're, what you're looking at is overall, what did your object do? And so when you're looking at um, averages and average velocities and things like that, you denote with this little bar symbol overhead. Uh, what you have next is how do you define um, the, uh, more specifically what we're looking for in physics is it, it's denoted as the change in displacement over the change in time, not just specifically um, where you are, but often how far you're moving away from the origin point. And so sometimes you'll see these denoted as distance final minus distance initial and time final minus time initial. And then same thing for, uh, for speed is that sometimes it's not necessarily given from the origin point, so you're going to get the difference of your starting and your ending positions. Uh, another thing we talk about in kinematics out the gate is acceleration, which is the change in velocity over time. And so that would then be uh, velocity final minus velocity initial all over t final minus t initial. All right, you guys, um, so that's just covering very basically um, now this is usually where regular physics or high school physics stops, but then we switch gears and then we go over to a more complex derivation of these formulas, which are um, often known as the kinematics formulas. And so that's what you get is on your reference sheet, you'll see velocity final equals uh, velocity initial plus acceleration times time. You'll also see uh, x final minus or equals x initial plus uh, initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half a t squared. And then the last one is velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus two a delta x. Now, when you're using uh, any of these kinematics formulas, um, very often you're not given one variable and so you, uh, in the first two, you see that you use time, but in this last one, you don't. So if you're not given time or an easy way to find time, you're probably going to use that third equation. Alrighty. So now let's, uh, let's put on the, uh, the next gears, and that would be then looking at what do these graphs look like when we're looking at displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So if we did a displacement versus time graph, a velocity versus time, and then acceleration versus time graph, what would these look like? Now, I imagine um, very frequently uh, when you see graphing questions in dealing with kinematics, they're going to ask for what do these relationships mean? So I'm going to draw three, three basic graphs, and then we're going to color code what's happening with three different scenarios. So um, in this first scenario, Let's look at an object that has some positive velocity and then it continues on with a constant positive velocity. I guess I should go ahead and also label my graphs as well, velocity and time, this is acceleration and time, and this is displacement and time. So if I, my object in red here has a positive velocity, what is happening to its distance over time? Well, the distance over time would, let's say we start at the zero, and then as time goes on, we're going to travel at a constant slope. All right, 
So what if then we were to have this velocity, what would the acceleration be? Well, if this object's going at a constant velocity, keyword there, constant velocity, your acceleration is gonna be zero and stay at zero. All right, so let's try a different example. Let's do, what if my object uh, had a negative velocity, but then was went to zero at some time interval? Well, if my velocity was negative and then went to zero after a time, that means it is accelerating in the positive direction. So if my object was going left and then stopped after a while, that means acceleration has to be in the positive direction to slow it down. So my acceleration is going to be here, and it's going to be constant. Alrighty, and so then what would the displacement versus time graph of that look like? Well, initially, we're going to go in the negative direction, since we are doing a negative velocity, uh, but then my graph is going to taper off to where the slope of this is zero. Alrighty. So the displacement would be a negative displacement because you're going the negative direction, but then it would taper off to zero because then your object is stopping. Alrighty, let's, uh, let's try this again with a little bit more complicated example. What if I gave you, and I told you my object started at zero, um, but then had a negative acceleration the whole time? So my object had initial velocity at zero, but then had a negative acceleration the whole time, which means it's going to be accelerating in the negative direction. Alrighty, so what would that displacement over time graph look like? It would start at zero, and we would go in the negative direction, but we would be curving downwards, because so as time goes on, we're gonna be going faster and faster and faster. Alrighty, if you need help with some more of those, feel free to shoot me a message and I can help walk you through those a little more, maybe give you some more examples. There are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, kinematics problems where you can do with this graphing. If you hop on my Google site, I believe I'm gonna put a uh, practice of what this looks like, and that way you can kind of test this, test yourself and see how you're doing. Alrighty guys, so let's, let's continue on with the next thing. When you look at kinematics, very frequently, you are left with, um, either very simple problems or you're left with a projectile problem which is going to be uh, unpacking some of those kinematics equations. So the first one we're going to talk about is a horizontal projectile kicked off a cliff. So if I had it was on top of a, a cliff with a soccer ball and I kicked it straight horizontally, what kind of relationship does that um, ball follow? So this is noted as a horizontal projectile. Um, and then from this, we can make a couple of very large assumptions. We can make the assumption that acceleration in the x direction equals zero. Because there's nothing in the x direction that's causing that ball to speed up or slow down. There's not somebody continually pushing it along. There's nothing really slowing it down. And in this class, we ignore air resistance. Um, so, and the next thing, uh, when you're looking at horizontal projectiles, typically what you want to do is you want to find... Um, your time it takes for that ball to hit the ground first. F so find T first. And why would we want to do that? Um, in our projectile problems, what you're usually given is you're given your height, which is going to be your change in Y. Uh, notice that your change in Y is going to be negative though, because it's always final minus initial. Uh, you're right, you have change in height, we have acceleration in the y direction, which is gravity. For the sakes of numericals, when it comes to the this class, we use negative 10. So it's negative 10 meters per second squared or uh, meters per second per second. All right. Uh, so the next thing is uh, if we know that and we know the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, this will give you enough information to start your kinematics equations. Because if we know height is delta y, we know initial velocity in the y direction is zero, you can use your second kinematics equation, 
to find time, the time it would take, because this right here would cancel out to zero. And so what you're left with then is delta y, or your negative of your height, equals one half a acceleration in the y direction, t squared. All right, and so that's how you'd usually find time first. Um, and then the next piece um, would be, what if we were to then take this and um, look at, instead of a horizontal projectile, we did a projectile from the ground. So what if I were to kick this off? What if I were to kick this off the ground? And um, what kind of uh, kinematics would we use here? Well, the first thing I would look at is uh, we're going to do the same kind of method here. So this would be a, uh, let's give it a title, we'll call this projectile at an angle. So what are some things that still apply here? Well, the acceleration in the x direction is still going to be zero because there's nothing pushing or pulling or stopping or slowing down that ball in the x direction. But there is the acceleration in the y direction, and that is still negative 10 meters per second squared. What else do we know? Well, instead of trying to find time, it's usually helpful to find t one half first. All right using some of those same principles we talked about just a second ago, and then from there, find time. All right, how would you do that um, exactly? Well, if we look at this ball while it is flying at the halfway point, um, it's a velocity in the y direction goes from an upwards to a downwards. So if we're going upwards to a downwards, that means very momentarily, the velocity in the y direction at the halfway point is equal to zero. So this allows us to make some really good, interesting discoveries here. First one being, uh, if we know uh, our height, so delta y, we would also then look at, um, oh, I'm using the wrong formula. We would know, uh, often we would know uh, initial velocity in the y direction, uh, so final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration t. This is the equation we'd use, but we'd redress it a little bit to be velocity at the halfway point in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus acceleration, which is negative 10, times t one half. From there, we could unpack it and then start to look at those different things. But we run into a problem is, we don't know initial velocity in the y direction. We know initial velocity, but not in the y direction. So for example here, we know that this arrow right here represents uh, its velocity, initial velocity, but we don't know is its components in the uh, x and y direction. So v sub x and v sub y. How would you then do this problem? Uh, we're going to have to use a little bit of trig here, so I'm going to redraw this triangle real quickly. We have initial velocity, we have velocity in the y direction, we have initial velocity in the x direction, and we have an angle theta here. Some of you might see where this is starting to go, is we're going to have to use our trig functions here. Well, if I'm looking for initial velocity in the y direction, we're looking at opposite over hypotenuse. And so the sine of uh, my angle would then equal initial velocity in the y direction all over initial, or sorry, initial velocity. So initial velocity in the y direction equals initial velocity sine theta. What about the x direction? Well, you could do initial velocity in the x direction would be initial velocity cosine of theta as well. Okay, so you're welcome to try that trig identity and try that out for yourself. Okay, you are going to then plug this bad boy right in there. And so what you can then find out is uh, what kind of time you have at the halfway point. Once you get that t one half, multiply it by two, um, and then that will get you your full time. So for example, if it only take one second for your ball to go up to the top, it would take two seconds to go the full path. All right.
Uh, one cheap, cheap, cheap trick to know kind of in your back pocket is initial velocity, the magnitude of it is equal to the final velocity when you're looking at these projectile questions. So if we got kicked upwards at 10, it's going to be coming back downwards at the same angle at 10 meters per second. Alrighty, uh, let's look at some other pieces. Um, when you're doing kinematics equations, usually, um, or kinematics FRQs, usually they're going to be graphing related. Uh, so there's a couple of things I really want to unpack in here. Is that when you're looking at acceleration and velocity and displacement, this um, tells you a little bit more information than what we've led on to believe so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with, back with a, a new slate and I'm going to redraw some of these graphs. So if we have, I'm going to draw just a hair bit bigger, if we have a velocity versus time graph. So we got velocity and we have time. Let's say they give me a graph and the graph looks a little something like this. What information can I pull out of it? Um, let me actually not connect those lines. Velocity versus time graph looks like that. And we'll call this time interval T1. What two informations, uh, what, sorry, what three pieces of information could I pull from this? First one being, um, you can find the velocity at any given time interval. So if we're looking at the velocity at time interval of one, it would be whatever value that is. Pretty easy to do that. What about uh, reading what else we can get from the graph? So this is a huge thing that uh, the College Board wants you to do as far as being able to read a graph. We took a, a second and we talked about um, slope. If we take a second look at slope, what is slope? Slope is uh, the change in your y over the change in your x. Well, what is my y variable on this graph? And that is uh, change in velocity. My x variable down here is change in time. Well, what did we talk about earlier? What is change in velocity over change in time? And that is your average acceleration. So the slope of your graph tells you acceleration. Alrighty, what about displacement or change of displacement? If we look at, so we looked at the line itself to find, we could find velocity. The slope tells us acceleration. What does this area under the line tell me? Well, let's just do that math. Let's look, if I do the area of this line, which would be um, uh, time times velocity, that would get me displacement. So if you look at the area underneath a velocity versus time graph, the, the area of that graph means displacement. So how do, how do I know that exactly? Well, velocity equals displacement over time. And what we just did is we just did velocity times time. So my change in displacement equals velocity times time. And so for the, the area underneath the graph is your displacement. Okay, or change in displacement more specifically. Cool. Let's go on to the next one. What can I do with a velocity versus time graph? Or sorry, acceleration versus time. So I got acceleration, we have time, we have some basic slope right here. Well, if I want to look at what's going on here, you can find the acceleration at any given point by just reading the graph. Pretty easy, you could say the acceleration at that point is that value, totally cool. Well, what does the slope tell me? Here for this class, it doesn't tell you anything because uh, it'd be change acceleration over change in time, um, which is something, but we just don't talk about it in this class. So not gonna do it. What we're gonna talk about is the area underneath that line. So what happens if the area is going to be uh, acceleration times time? Well, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So change in velocity equals acceleration times time. So the area underneath my graph here tells me uh, this is my change in velocity. 
cool? All right, now very quickly, I am going to go back here and explain this in a very simple way. I'm going to call these levels of information. So the slope of the graph tells you the next level of information. So the slope. So the slope here of this graph is acceleration. The slope of this graph is velocity. Alrighty. And then what about going backwards? The area under the line tells you the next uh, the level below the information. So that's change in velocity. For those people who are taking calculus or might be or have already taken it, this is looking at integrals or antiderivatives. So the derivative will tell you um, the next level of information while the integral bumps it down. So the derivative of a velocity versus time graph gets you acceleration. The derivative of a distance versus time graph gets you velocity. All right, and then so on and so forth. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're going to wrap all that up and we're going to call this done. But I just remember there is one thing that we want to talk about um, briefly when I go back here and looking at um, speed versus velocity. Speed is what kind of number? It's a scalar. If I could spell scalar correctly. And then what kind of number is velocity? And this is a vector. Okay. Speed and velocity are not the same thing. Speed is a scalar number. Velocity is a vector number. You can often have a speed but not have a velocity depending on your situation. All right. So when you're talking about velocity, directions and signage does matter. When you're talking about speed, direction and signage does not matter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's going to be it. Um, uh, good luck, and if you have any questions about this, you want me to expand upon it, I can easily do a con kinematics concept map part two. Uh, just let me know what materials you want on there. Cool, and I will see you guys on the next video.